The assassination plot in the early parts of Final Fantasy VIII is one of the most entertainingly stupid things I have ever experienced in my lifetime of playing video games. It is so nonsensical on so many levels as to transcend all critique and become a work of art. I love this part of the game specifically because it is so spectacularly dumb. To properly understand the raw insanity of this scene, first, let's lay the groundwork. This is Squall. He's a mercenary. He has amnesia, but doesn't know it. He's the best-looking guy here. This is Kistis. She's a mercenary. She has amnesia, but doesn't know it. This is Zell. He's a mercenary. He has amnesia, but doesn't know it. This is Selfie. She's a mercenary. She has amnesia, but doesn't know it. This is Renoa. She's not a mercenary and doesn't have amnesia. Give it time. This is Galbadia. They have been behaving badly. Their president wants to dominate the world, but apparently he got bored of trying to do this with his army of power fisters, so instead he wants to try strong arm diplomacy. But how will he let everyone know about this change in policy? Live television broadcast, obviously. But, oh no, live television broadcasts haven't been a thing for 20 years, I guess. Obviously, the president will have to launch an unprovoked attack on this town over here to fix their communications tower so he can use it to relay his message of peace live to all the people who won't be watching the live television broadcasts that haven't been around for 20 years. The president is not the best at planning. This may explain why his new plan is to use a sorceress as a diplomat. Sorceresses are widely perceived as evil and are often feared and hated. What could possibly go wrong? So, the stage is set. Our child soldier amnesiacs are enlisted to assassinate the sorceress. Azing them will be Irvine. He's a mercenary. He only recently got amnesia and sort of realizes it. Also, we all grew up in the same orphanage together. Except her. But we don't know that. He does. Doesn't think it's worth mentioning. Thanks, bro. I wish I could say we sneak into the capital of Galbadia and covertly carry out an operation of extreme efficiency, but I've used up my lying allotment for the month, so I can't. Instead, we walk right in and we go meet with Renault's dad. He's a Galbadian general, who also wants the sorceress dead. In fact, he planned this whole thing. How do we know that? He takes us on a walking tour of the city in broad daylight to openly discuss our plans to assassinate the sorceress in public. Truly a genius. The plan is pretty simple. The president will give a speech, and then there will be a parade. The parade starts here, then goes here. Team 1 closes this gate once the sorceress is inside, definitely not alerting her to something going on. Team 2 shoots her from here, because apparently the presidential palace is equipped with a giant light-up carnival ride that pops up out of the roof at 8pm every night. And if that doesn't work, we rush her and murder her the old-fashioned way with battle corgis and sword guns. But Renoa wants to help. She has a bracelet. This bracelet is supposed to stop the wearer from using magic. Will it work? Who knows? But Renoa really wants to try. She gets a verbal thrashing for not realizing that adding unnecessary complexity to a delicate assassination attempt is a terrible idea. Then it's time to add some unnecessary complexity to a delicate assassination attempt. Team 1 gets to the gate, but Kistis feels bad for giving Renoa a verbal thrashing. So Kistis decides to abandon her post and go apologize to Renoa and manages to get her entire team locked in a room. The same room that Renoa has just left because she wants to go give the bracelet to the sorceress. That works out about as well as you'd expect. The sorceress starts to give a speech about how she is going to be evil and tyrannical. Then, in front of a live crowd of cheering people, she murders the president. Nobody seems to care. Renoa seems to be very okay with it. Then, possibly just to test if the cheering crowd will react to anything at all, the sorceress conjures a couple of lizard monsters to rush through the crowd. They keep on cheering. At this point, I think they are just desperate to get out of this game. The parade starts, complete with costume dancers and the still cheering crowds. Squall and Irvine sneak across a busy street filled with people and climb onto the president's palace to save Renoa, who is being attacked by those lizard things. Then you do this for five straight minutes if you want that sweet, sweet magic. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kistis and her group of Einsteins are trying to find their way out of a locked room. There is a wooden door, a glass window, and three people with superhuman strength, one of whom is a trained martial artist so powerful he can run around the entire planet in seconds. So naturally, they find a secret staircase that leads directly from the office of a military general into the city sewers. Squall's team make it to the carnival ride and find a rifle waiting for them, but then Irvine starts to have a nervous breakdown. Apparently, he always chokes at times like this. Pretty poor choice for our sniper. Team 1 reaches the gatehouse with only a minute to spare and closes the gates, locking the sorceress inside and immediately alerting her to some kind of trap, which, again, was the plan from the start. The carnival ride rises, Squall helps Irvine calm down, and the cowboy takes his shot, which is immediately blocked by the sorceress. How could she have possibly known something fishy was going on? Oh well, at least she's still trapped in the gatehouse. It isn't like somebody could just walk through the bars. Oh, god damn it.
Plan B it is. Squall and Irvine rush over, now passing through a riot. When did the riot start and why? I don't know, and I suspect neither does the game. Unfortunately, it turns out powerful sorceresses have powerful sorcery, and Squall gets impaled. Then it's time for a dream sequence, because 10% of this entire game is dreaming about beautiful men.